everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to jump into loan to value and specifically why it's important for you as an investor to understand how leverage works in investments and how it can specifically affect you. Let's jump in today. So I'm going to be using an apartment complex for this example. We'll use a couple different ones. Maybe we'll look at a development. Uh, you know, Maybe we'll even look at stocks and discuss what part leverage plays and why it's important to understand exactly how leveraged what vehicle you are in is so you probably hear this term loan to value ratio thrown around a lot especially if you're in the multifamily world a lot of the loan to values are, are thrown around well what is a loan to value loan to value is just what percentage of the value of the asset is a loan. So for example, if you've got an apartment complex, let's say it's worth $100,000 and there is a loan for 70% of it, a 70% loan to value, that means that there is a $70,000 loan on it. This is good. That means you own an asset that's worth 100 grand, you only owe $70,000 on it. There's $30,000 of equity. Hey, you've got an asset here. Now, let's introduce another dynamic here. Let's say that the general partner that owns this apartment complex is not the only owner. And he actually raised $10,000 from an investor to put down as a down payment to get this $70,000 loan. So same example, you've got a $100,000 apartment complex. There is a loan on it for $70,000, but there's also $10,000 of investor principal in it. And then you've got about $20,000 of actual equity that'll be split between the general partner and the investor in the deal. So in this specific example, we've got leverage being used. We're leveraging the investor's $10,000 to go and get $70,000 from a bank to get a loan. Why is this important to know? Because the bank gets paid back first every time. If the value of that apartment complex drops from $100,000 to $70,000, which is equal to the loan, and you are forced to sell this apartment for whatever reason, maybe you're not making payments, the bank takes possession of it and sells it and they get $70,000 for it, just enough to pay back their loan, it means that investor lost 100% of their $10,000 investment. Very, very important to know. One of the reasons why uh, general partners can uh, pay such high returns in apartment syndications and developments and other things in real estate is because of this form of leverage. And it's important that they really know and understand what they're doing because it can really swing both ways. So, for example, if say that investor says, hey, you know what, I'll give you the $10,000 for the $70,000 loan. I just want 25% of the profits over $100,000. So let's say that the general partner goes, cool, Mr. Investor, I'll take that $10,000. I'll go get the loan for $70,000. It's worth $100,000. We've got some equity in here. And let's say that a year later, they decide to sell that deal. And again, they sell it for $110,000 meaning there was about $10,000 of additional equity that the general partner promised to give to the investor. Investor said, hey, I'll give you my 10 grand. But in this, again, I'm just using a hypothetical example here. I want all the, pro I want 25% of the profits over the $100,000. In this case, 25% of $10,000, again, 10,000 over 100,000, that is $2,500. Well, if you look at the return that investor made on their $10,000, they made 2,500 bucks on a $10,000 investment. That's a 25% IRR, a 25% return on investment. That is a really attractive IRR. And that's why you can see these, you know, 18%, 20%, you know, 25% IRRs in these assets is because of the use of leverage. Now it's just, it's important. I kind of like compare the capital stack. And when I say capital stack, I'm referring to the bank's money, the investor's money, and then the general partner's money, and then any equity that is created in this opportunity. You need to know where you're at in the equity stack of when you're going to get paid out. Think of it like a jar of honey. If you've got a very high loan to value ratio, let's say 
that um, same example that we have and the general the general partner goes to an investor and says, hey, I need your $10,000 to buy this apartment complex that's worth $100,000. And they go, great. Well, how much of a loan are you getting on it? And they go, well, uh, I'm getting a loan for $90,000. Well, wait a minute. You said the apartment's worth $100,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth $100,000, but I'm buying it for ninety, dollars and I just need $10,000. Well, that means that the ninety k bank loan plus the $10,000 investment from the investor equals what the asset is. There's hardly no equity in here that insulates the investor's investment. There's no protection. If that value drops even a thousand bucks from a hundred and ninety nine thousand the investor just lost ten percent of their money so very important to understand how much leverage there is kind of compared to a jar of honey if you got a jar of honey that's just filled to the brim if any kind of earthquake or any kind of event shakes that honey even a little bit you're gonna have honey that pours over the top Whereas if you've got a honey jar that's half full, you can almost turn that thing sideways. You I mean you can throw anything at it, and it's going to take a long time for uh, that honey to pour out of that jar. And so you don't want to have very highly leveraged assets. Uh, you know, typically, you know, in the past, you know, below eighty percent has been a rule of thumb, especially in, in larger deals. You don't want to see highly leveraged assets because again, that is your cushion, that is your protection as an investor and you want to make sure there's some kind of plan in place to force appreciate the value of that asset which gives you a bigger cushion between your investment and what the sell price of the property is hope you understand uh, loan to value and leverage and how this plays if you got value from this do us a favor leave us five stars on podcast reviews and share this with your friends and family we'll see you next time